about recovery intervals and uh, more specifically the role checkpoint plays in enabling those recovery intervals and meeting the requirements of that functionality. So in this video, we're basically going to cover a few different things. The first one being what is a recovery interval, uh, what is a checkpoint and why it is important. There are a couple of different ways that checkpoint gets used. So we're going to talk about the different ways, uh, different types of checkpoint. Uh, there are again, uh, difference in terms of uh, the functionality. So we're going to talk about the difference between a direct checkpoint and an indirect checkpoint. We'll also talk about uh, when to change the values and where you can change them. And uh, at the end, I'll give you a link about where you can find more details about accelerated database recovery and why it is very similar to a car wash. Now, before we can get started, it's a good idea to recap some of the stuff that we already know. So when a database shuts down unexpectedly, it is important that when it comes back online, everything is consistent. And in order to do this, SQL Server traverses the transaction log file, identifies the changes and the data pages that were modified, and then verifies whether these uh, pages are consistent at the MDF level as well. And if it is, then it moves on to the next page. And by doing this, basically what happens is SQL Server is able to ensure that all the changes that are there in the transaction log file have been successfully written to the MDF file and are consistent. Uh, having said that, the recovery interval doesn't really have much to do with the undo phase of this whole process. So when you do recovery, you have the analysis, the redo and the undo. And recovery intervals and checkpoint really only have to do with the redo phase, where we are synchronizing the pages from the buffer pool into the disk so that when transaction log file is being traversed, most of the changes are already persisted on the disk. Undo, on the other hand, relates to removing the changes that have been made by an uncommitted transaction and we could have a single transaction that's modified a very large number of pages as a result we end up in a situation where even though the redo completes quickly the undo might take some amount of time so let's talk about the recovery interval a little bit now this is the definition that i've seen a lot of people use it's the time taken for the database to come online after an unexpected shutdown and that's not really the case it is actually the trigger that is used to decide how frequently checkpoint will run and when checkpoint runs it'll move the dirty pages to the disk and that in turn will try to control the amount of time that sql server spends in the redo phase of recovery now there are certain other aspects to it as well about how the redo phase works but we'll get into that later on uh, obviously there are two different types of uh, recovery intervals which i think for the most part, a lot of people are not really aware, so we'll get into that next. Now, before we can do that, let's talk about checkpoint. Now, checkpoint is basically the process that writes the dirty pages from the buffer pool to the uh, to the disk. And by doing this, it basically ensures that most of the changes that you will find in the transaction log file are already present in the MDF file. And the transaction log file can just quickly go forward in the redo phase. Now, because the re uh, dirty pages are written to the disk proactively, when SQL Server starts back up, it will actually see that the, the checksum value of the MDF file, dirty pa uh, the pages in the, uh, the transaction number inside the page is consistent with the transaction number that's already inside uh, the log sequence number is already consistent with the transaction log files log sequence number. And that's kind of where uh, SQL Server goes through the redo phase. It looks at the log sequence number inside the page. It looks at the log sequence number in the transaction log. And if it finds that the log sequence number in the transaction log matches the log sequence number of the page, it knows that they are in sync and it can just move on. Now, when we talk about checkpoint, there are uh, automatic, manual, internal, and ind uh, indirect. Automatic is basically what most people think about when they think about checkpoint, and it's basically triggered by the number of transactions. So what happens is SQL Server, when you set the server property for recovery interval, has an, a threshold where you say one minute, and SQL Server tries to figure out how many transactions it can successfully uh, redo within one minute. And then based on that, when a certain threshold of transactions is reached, checkpoint runs and pushes the dirty pages or all the pages from that transaction uh, from the buffer pool into the RAM. A manual uh, checkpoint is where you type in the word checkpoint in management studio and you press F5. And uh, that basically triggers a checkpoint on its own without really waiting for a number of transactions, etc. The other one is internal where uh, and certain database processes like backup snapshot require a consistent copy of the MDF file and therefore uh, checkpoint will be running um, internally before uh, the backup etc starts off. Uh, 
Now the really important one in this whole process is the indirect checkpoints which actually behaves totally different from the other ones that we've mentioned so far. And that's because the indirect checkpoint really uses the number of dirty pages, not the transactions. And this gives us a far more consistent behavior as far as redo phase is concerned because you could have one transaction that's modified a very large number of pages, but because it's just a one transaction checkpoint might not necessarily run uh, for uh, the previous cases that we mentioned. But with an indirect checkpoint, because we're really counting the number of dirty pages, it doesn't matter whether it's one transaction or a hundred transactions, we always know that for a certain number of dirty pages, checkpoint is going to trigger. And that makes sure that we don't have too many dirty pages that need to be redone during the recovery phase. And this is the default behavior as of 2016. And therefore, DBA should actually be worried about the checkpoint intervals for indirect rather than the direct. Now, the direct checkpoint is done by right-clicking the server properties and going into the database settings where you will see recovery interval over here is set to zero. How is it said that what we actually want people to be doing nowadays is to go into the database, go into the options and looking for recovery here and changing the value of target recovery time. Uh, the target recovery time in this case for both are basically 60, but this one counts the number of transactions and this one counts the number of dirty pages. And there's a big difference in terms of performance based on uh, this. Uh, typically, the recommendation that you'll see for setting these values are you should set it higher if you find checkpoint interfering with the normal disk operations such as regular query writing, etc. And you should set it to a lower value if it takes too long to come online after an unexpected shutdown. Now, personally, what I found is I almost always end up setting it to a higher value because it's more important for me that the database is running fine. Uh, during its normal operational hours rather than worry about the edge case that may or may not happen. So typically again we work with a very large number of large databases and there's a lot of leeway in terms of the time that it will take to bring back the databases online. Also there are other features like indirect checkpointing and there are other features like accelerated database recovery which further improve the performance compared to previous versions of SQL Server. So, uh, I almost find myself always increasing the value rather than decreasing it. So uh, that's pretty much it as far as the behavior of checkpoint etc. is concerned. Accelerated database recovery, you can go ahead and look at this link. It will give you a detailed description of how exactly uh, uh, accelerated database recovery works. And it's actually very, very fast. And that's a really good thing for us because it improves the performance of the recovery of the database especially for long-running queries where there have been a large number of modifications and the, the the core concept behind it is it looks at the last checkpoint and from there traverses forward and it basically because it's only doing it from the last checkpoint the number of physical changes it needs to do is far fewer than uh, what you would have in the previous versions of SQL Server. Uh, this is again a database setting that you need to enable separately so we'll come to that in another video uh, that's pretty much it as far as uh, accelerated um, as far as checkpoint and recovery intervals is concerned i've gone ahead and created a quick little script that you can use to kind of verify this really quick so first i'm going to go ahead and create the database and uh, inside the database i'm going to create a table and i'm going to run checkpoint manually followed by checking the transaction log file. And you'll see that this is what the checkpoint looks like when we look inside the transaction log file. There's a begin, the actual checkpoint, followed by an end or commit. Uh, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert some data into the table that I just created. And uh, as you can see, I'm inserting about 50,000 rows into the table. So that's gonna be, uh, I hope, sufficient to trigger multiple checkpoints. And uh, what we'll see in the transaction log file is that the checkpoint will actually be uh, having separate entries uh, when it gets fired. So let's just wait a few minutes and uh, once that's done we should be able to query the next step and see the uh, actual checkpoints available inside the um, the transaction log file. I'll go ahead and paste a copy of this script in the uh, the blog and the link so you can go ahead and look at it. I highly recommend you also look at the accelerated database uh, recovery uh, post that I've done previously because uh, there are some really interesting differences between how accelerated database recovery works versus um, uh, the typical um, recovery process and uh, I don't really see any disadvantage to it so personally I think that that's something that you should definitely enable if you're using uh, SQL 2019 
uh, doesn't seem to have any drawbacks as such and uh, as far as I understand it's the default behavior in Azure so any database created in Azure basically has accelerated database recovery enabled by default So as you can see here, when we run this query now, we've got a large number of checkpoint uh, triggers that have happened. And that's kind of the expected behavior when you insert large volumes of data into the database. So that's pretty much it as far as uh, this video is concerned. I hope you've got a better understanding of how checkpoint and recovery interval uh, plays a role in bringing the database online after an unexpected shutdown. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.